Good morning. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear. And I am a writer and a reader. And today, welcome to the first episode of World Building Wormhole. So if you watch my last writing vlog, you will see that I had at the very end of Camp Nano a bright, shiny new idea. And as I've been thinking about it more, I'm actually really interested to make this my nano project for November, which is great. I don't need a lot of information to start a zero draft for a nano. So I'm very excited to go ahead and do this. I've gotten the first few couple of scenes and it's not like written out, but it, I know where I want to go. And now I need to do some world building because when I, it comes to writing science fiction, I actually feel the need to have more information about, I, at least I need to know how the mechanics of things work. And so that's what we're going to be doing for the next few world building wormholes. Is you're going to be following me with this journey as I work through the world building for my story. I am going to attach a Google Doc down below, and if you want to add questions or comments or sources, it's going to be open for you to do that. It is not my definitive document, but it is, it'll be a working document, so I'm okay with other people adding things. For the first topic that I'm going to be covering is artificial gravity, and to start off with, just so happens that Houston, we have a podcast did a podcast episode about artificial gravity. Welcome to the official podcast of the NASA Johnson Space Center, episode 188, Artificial Gravity. So re-listening to the podcast about artificial gravity was very interesting. The guest talked about some different ways that the scientific community has thought about doing artificial gravity, and even how the concept of artificial gravity and whether or not we actually need it has changed over time. So I thought it would be interesting to bring up some different science fiction stories. Um, the first one that I thought of was Space Cadet. And in this, they have their school ship, which in the school ship, it can be rotated to have gravity, but normally they keep it at zero G. They only rotate gravity on when new students are aboard and are getting used to it. Another concept that we see, especially in fiction, is kind of like The Martian, where most of the ship is zero-g, but then they have that portion that rotates around. If you've ever seen the movie The Martian, I, re I always remember the scene where the captain is floating down the hallway. They say, oh, hey, we have mail. And then you see her go onto the ladder and just slide down. And then when she gets to the bottom, she can just walk because there's gravity down there. So that's another concept of how to introduce artificial gravity. Th I mean, this is a very popular one. In fact, you know, it's been used in many different stories, like Record of the Spaceborne View. This is talking about the Exodan fleet. And they talk about, at one time, the home, or the living quarters were kept, or were rotated to be kept in gravity. And, I mean, that's another, but that's another ship that even they talk about there's certain sections of it which is zero G and how there's different effects. So something else that the guest talked about was using thrust to create gravity, which is something that Andy Weir has used in Project Hail Mary. I haven't finished the book, but I've got to, you know, he talks about this at the very beginning, having that thrust that causes it and then to have a, and then again later has the circling the centrifuge, which uses centripetal force in order to create gravity. And then sometimes in fiction, you have things where like, you know, six weeks where it, the artificial gravity generator has just been done and they don't go into too much detail about it. When I was talking, like getting different questions of how, what I should think about for my story, I was just kind of about like, oh, it exists. I, I don't want to think about too much about it. But my dad did make a good point that I should know at least what's going on. And then as I was thinking about it, I'm like, no, I kind of like the idea of part of the ship spinning and that part has gravity and then people live in zero G otherwise. That made the third thing that the guest talked about very attractive. 
which is a machine where the astronaut or the person goes into for maybe like an hour a day and that coupled with exercise can help somebody who lives the rest of their time in zero g i mean they talked about the point where two-thirds of our life is in gravity so we have one-third where we're sleeping and gravity is not affecting us in the same way so how much of a force do we need and so i really like that idea of that machine and they talked about the even at one point had wanted to have that put onto iss but they realized that the vibrations of the machine would screw up the iss because it wasn't built for that and so they've done other like tests like on land but haven't had it yet a chance to actually try this out in space and then you know we have other books like the expanse series that just talks about people change physiologically you know they, with the belters their limbs elongated, their body mass changed. They adapted to the space environment and it meant that rarely, if at all, would they go down to a planet. So yes, the artificial gravity is becoming a much more interesting concept than I originally thought it would. And again, I think I'm leaning towards having the major parts of the station rotating but then have a stem downwards where all the refugee ships get parked while they wait for people to recuperate and then decide if they want to go elsewhere or where they want to go elsewhere. My idea is to have their living quarters near their ships so in case of emergency they'd be able to escape on their ship they'd be fine but have those living quarters in zero g but with machines where those who are spending more time down there can still exercise and have that effect but again still processing everything and how does this artificial gravity work i like the idea of having on part of the ship because then i can have a more garden like area because i'd like this society to be more self-sufficient but more on that at another time so yes yeah, still researching more about artificial gravity and how it would work <music> I am tired, I am cranky, and these are serious side effects of going down the rabbit hole of world building. I haven't been sleeping very well because every time I turn off the light, my brain goes into the mode of how does artificial gravity affect this part of the station? How does it affect this part of the station? What are we going to do here? And thus there's been some nights that I did not sleep very much. I realize that this is probably not everyone's process, but I do a lot of story thinking at night and then when I wake up in the morning, I do my writing. So yeah, I did find some great resources about artificial gravity. And again, I put those resources on my Google Doc. And again, I have linked that in the description notes below. And you're more than welcome to add resources to that. Anything that you found interesting. I'm really glad that I've only given myself a week to think about this topic. And now next week I have to move on to something else. Because yeah, this could be a lot. Um, so I think what I have decided is portions of the station are going to be in zero G like in the, I've been calling it the stem cause it's like a stock down with leaves branching off. And in those leaves are the habitats of where the refugees live. Those are going to be zero G and then have personal centrifuge devices so that the inhabitants can exercise regularly. However, they aren't restricted to just that area. They can go anywhere on station. So it's not expected that they would always be there, but just in case they decide, I don't want to go onto the rest of the station, they could still exercise and maintain their muscular form. The upper part of the station will use artificial gravity in the form of spinning, like we see on the Martian, which has really changed some of my floor plan designs for it. But that's okay. It'll work still. It just makes, you know, it's nice to know the geography ahead of time. So when I'm writing, everything can be consistent and I don't have to do an over, or I don't have to do a major rehaul in writing to explain where things are and how they're being accessed. But it, so a side effect of studying this, something I had not expected to worry about was the story is gonna be taking place the whole time on Waste Station. However, this universe is more expansive and I had to come to the decision of how artificial gravity would 
be in other places, on other stations, on other commercial stations. Do they use the same thing or do they have other devices? And while, so on the way station, we're using the spinning, but I do have where technology has been improved and on commercial stations that are more about enterprise and money, they will have developed an artificial gravity where people are not needing to be rotated. At least I think that's how it's going to be. I'm not worried about the other stories in this universe yet. I'm just doing this one. Leaving off with the artificial gravity, next week I am planning to do funding or the history behind how the station happened and how it has continued to be funded. A little bit different, moving away from the science and more into administration and money. But thank you for joining me for this week of world building wormhole and I hope to see you next week.